Hey guys, Joe back at it once again with some A-level further maths topics and today we're going to be continuing with some more complex number theory. So, uh, in the last lesson we uh, found out what a complex number was, how to add them, how to times them, how to subtract them, how to divide them and uh, if you missed that lesson that was only released a couple of days ago so go and check it out on the channel. Uh, so the learning objective for today is to understand how the conjugate can be used to work out what the equation of a quadratic was. So here we go. Last lesson we learned what a complex number is uh, and we know it comprises of both real and imaginary parts and looks a little bit like this. So z equals x plus iy where z is the complex number, x is the real part, y is the imaginary part. We also briefly, uh, very briefly, talked about the conjugate of a complex number. We said that it's the same complex number, just that it has the imaginary part of it given a sign change. So if w equals 3 minus 4i, then w star equals uh, 3 plus 4i. Now we, now we already know that we can use the conjugate to help us uh, divide a complex number. And we know that they kind of work like thirds. But they're also a very powerful weapon in the world of forming quadratics. So let's solve this quadratic. There you go, x squared minus 4x plus 6 equals 0. Uh, it doesn't factorise, so I'll just use the formula. Uh, so we end up with that. x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Put in the numbers and you end up with that. And there you get that. And remember, using the new complex number knowledge, um, would would well before we knew that would say that there's no real roots, but now we can say there's two complex roots of four plus or minus two root two i over two, therefore x equals two plus or minus root two i. Uh, so these roots are the conjugates of each other because obviously uh, one is the sign change of another. So an interesting fact is when you get a complex answer from a quadratic, you'll get two answers that are the conjugate of each other. So that's uh, a really, really powerful thing in maths. And, you know, if you things just start to, to click uh, when you get to that. So we can use this fact to our advantage because if we know two roots of an equation, we can work out the original equation. Uh, so let's take the two generic roots of alpha and beta. So this can be written as... Uh, that, remember a root uh, inside a square bracket, uh, sorry, inside a bracket is x minus the root, so we, we reverse park it in and you get that. And if we expand that, we get x squared minus ax minus uh, alpha x minus beta x plus alpha beta, and that's equal to zero. And uh, this is factorized, so let's expand that to that bit. Uh, let's factorize only the coefficients of x. So we get that. So it's x squared minus x times alpha plus beta plus alpha beta equals zero. And this leads us to the rule that the x, x squared minus sum of the roots times x plus the product, product of the roots equals zero. So if four minus two i is a root of that, find a, b, and c. Well, remember, if that's one root, then we know the other root is that because they come in conjugate pairs. So the sum of the roots is just add them together, the i's will cancel out and you'll get 8, and the product of the roots is that, but remember, i squared is minus 1, so minus 4 times minus 1 is plus 4, so it ends up being 20. So we can rewrite our quadratic as x squared minus sum of the roots, add product of the, product of the roots, and we get that. So that is the, the quadratic, but if you want to check it, Let's use the quadratic formula, so you get that. 8 plus or minus the square root of 64 minus 4 times 20 over 2, which is that. And the root of minus 16 is 4i, so you get that. Dividing everything by 2, you get 4 plus or minus 2i, and that is what we started with up here. So there you go, it works, yay! So a equals 1, b equals minus 8, c equals 20. Let's do another one. Uh, if 1 plus root 2i is a root of that equation, find a, b, and c. So 1 plus root 2i is 1 root. 
So therefore, 1 minus root 2i is the other root because the roots come in conjugate pairs. Only complex roots, by the way. Uh, so the sum of the roots is that. Product of the roots is that. Remembering that i squared is minus 1, so t minus 2 times minus 1 is the same as plus 2, so it's 1 plus 2, which is 3. So x squared minus the sum of the roots, add the product, product of the roots equals 0, and you end up with that. And you can check it. Quadratic equation time, you get that. You get that. I'll see you 2 and everybody there. You get that. 1 plus or minus root 2i. Remember that is the same as that, and this is such a powerful tool in mathematics. So a equals 1, b equals minus 2, c equals 3. And that is today's lesson. So hopefully you guys have found it helpful. It's a really, really powerful piece of maths that you've come across there. Um, and the main thing to remember is that uh, complex uh, roots come in conjugate pairs so if you're given one complex root you know the other one instantly and remember x squared minus the sum of the roots x plus the product of the roots equals zero and you're on to a winner and also remember i squared equals minus one and yeah uh, that's going to bring an end to the complex number theory side and uh, we're going to learn how to draw complex numbers in the next episode on organ diagrams so hopefully you guys will enjoy that if you found it helpful please leave a like down below and uh, leave your feedback as well uh, in the comments and i'll be sure to reply to you and i hope you guys found this helpful hope you're having a wonderful day as well thanks for watching and goodbye